linear patterns and rules. So we've just looked at how to plot coordinates onto an xy space or into a two-dimensional plane. And the next thing that we're going to look at is being able to use that idea of finding particular points within the space using our coordinates to be able to communicate a pattern or a rule in a visual form. So one thing that I'd like you guys to remember is that a point always has to have a pair of numbers. You're always going to have something like x, comma, y. But it doesn't always have to be x, comma, y. Sometimes it might be something like n, comma, m. But it's going to be two things. And I'll get to an example about this one in the next little part that you'll look at. So looking at this table, I've given you a bunch of information about x points and a bunch of information about y's for particular points. And you have to notice that, again, you have to have them in pairs. So those first two, x1, y1, actually go together. And you could write them as 1, comma 1 if you want to do as a coordinate. So remember, x is always talking to us about how far left or right, and y is always talking to us about how far up and down. So we'll do the x first, and we go over 1, and then we would go up 1 as well. So that first point is at 1, comma 1. And I'm noticing here that there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I notice here that it's going up, each of those is going up in 1s. So if I wanted to plot the rest of these points, the next one is going to have an x of 2 and a y of 5. So I go over to 2, and I go up to 5, put in a point. And I've got 3 and 9, so I'll go over to 3, and then up to 9. Then I've got 4 and 13, so I go over to 4 and up to 13, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then I have 5 and 17, so I go over to 5 and up to 17, so 15, 16, 17. So those are all those points onto this space here for x, y. And one thing that you might notice here is that those points up here to sort of be falling on a straight line. And that's where the word linear comes from. So if you see something talking about being linear, you're literally talking about it being a straight line, or a pattern that looks as if it could be a straight line. And in this, you might also notice how much do we go up in each time between these. We go up by 4. From 5 to 9, I have to add 4. From 9 to 13, I add 4. From 13 to 17, I add 4. And between each of these points, I have to go up 4, up 4, up 4, up 4. So this graph becomes another way to visualize that each time we're going from one point to the next here, we're going up by the same amount each time. We're going up by 4 every time. And that is what gives us that straight line approach, that straight line look, that linear pattern. So let's look at an example that's similar to the work that we did earlier, when we actually have a physical pattern to look at. So here we have a pattern to table to rule, sorry, to graph to rule type of situation. Where you may see something that's familiar to you. Here we see this patterns built with little twigs or matchsticks, however you want to think about it. And so the first thing I'm asking you to do is actually fill in the table. Similar to what we've done before, we just need to count up the number of matchsticks for each pattern number. So the first pattern number, that's n equals 1. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 matchsticks. And the second pattern, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then the third pattern, again you might start to notice this part here is the second. So if that's 7, I have 8, 9, 10 matchsticks. And the fourth pattern, well you could draw it and count it up, but are you starting to notice the pattern here? The thing that's getting repeated each time. How much am I going up by each time? Plus three, plus three, so I would predict I'm going to go up by plus three again, and plus three again. So from ten, if I go up by three, I get two, thirteen, and from thirteen, if I go up by three, that's adding another 3 to it, that becomes 16. So we notice again, up by 3 every single time, and we're noticing here 
It's the same thing every time, so I might expect that I'll get a linear pattern again where each point is going to be three higher than the last point. But let's go ahead and plot the points. So if we're going to plot the points, remember they have to come in pairs, and in this case I'm using in for the pattern number and matchsticks as m. So you'll notice there's an in for the pattern number and an m for the number of matchsticks. Again, it doesn't always have to be x and y. It could be z, z and w, it could be a and b, it could be n and m, t and s, it could be anything. But in this case, what I'm representing along the bottom or the x-axis is the pattern number. What I'm presenting, representing along the y-axis is the matchsticks. So if I look carefully, the x-axis is increasing by 1, 2, 3, it's going up by 1s, and the y-axis is also going up by 1s. So now I can actually plot these points, remembering that I need them to be in pairs, so I'm going to have 1, 4, we'll go over 1 and up 4. I'm going to have 2, 7, so over 2 and up to 7. 3 and 10, over 3, up to 10. 4 and 13, over to 4, up to 13, 5 and 16, over to 5 and up to 16. So again, the points appear to fall in a straight line, and that's going to happen to us because we're looking at what we call a linear pattern. So we're going to be asked to find the rule as well, but before we do that, I just wanted to pause at this for a moment and look at it again. You'll notice that between each point we have indeed gone up by 3 every single time from 4 to 7, from 7 to 10, from 10 to 13, and from 13 to 16. So that same going up by 3 every single time. And if you remember from the previous topics when we've talked about writing the rules for these, we're going to start with M for matchsticks, so I want a rule to predict how many matchsticks I use. This 3 it's going to be my multiplier, so I need 3 times the pattern number. And I need to plus or minus something here, so let's examine this. If I'm at 3, what do I need to add on to get to 4? Or subtract. But in this case, I need to add 1. So my rule is going to be m is equal to 3 times n plus 1. Remember that we can also write that as 3n plus 1 there's a tiny little invisible time sign between the 3 and the n that you don't have to write. So let's take a second and look at the graph and see where we see these 3 and 1 come in again. So to get from the first point to the second point I had to go up by 3, I had to go up by 3, and I had to go up by 3, and again I had to go up by 3 every single time. But if I think about where I would have started at here, keeping that pattern of 3, where did I actually start if I was going to go backwards in time to the 0 pattern? The 0 pattern would have started at 1 because I am going to go up by 3 every single time, but on that very first step to the first pattern, I didn't go up by 3. How much did I go up by? I went up by 4 on the first pattern, so we needed that plus 1 on the first pattern. So again, you can get your rule by looking at the graph, noticing how much it goes by every single time, and then making an adjustment of a plus 1 here, or maybe a minus 4, whatever the situation calls for, for how to get to where your first point is. And again, you can get that from the table, noticing that we're going up by 3, up by 3, up by 3, and for the first one, how I get from 3 to 1, is going to, be, sorry, from 3 to 4 is going to be by doing plus 1. So that's my rule, and this is my graph to represent the rule. Now you don't have to put on the little 3's and all of that, just the blue points is fine. Just trying to show you guys how each one is going up by 3.